Hey guys, Kush here. You tired of hearing your friends brag about the great deal that they got? Today we're going to go over a couple tactics that you can use and hopefully negotiate better deals for you right now. One of the easiest things to control is your appearance. So you don't want to go wearing a t-shirt that has anything offensive written on it. You also don't want anything branded. So you don't want to go and try and negotiate a deal on a PlayStation item when you're wearing a PlayStation shirt or a PlayStation hat. It doesn't lend credence to you're negotiating because they know you're going to want it that much more. If everybody there is going to be wearing t-shirts and jeans or shorts, wear a t-shirt and jeans or shorts. You want to be comfortable. Make sure you're wearing something weather appropriate so you're not getting all hot and sweaty and gross and stinky because that doesn't help. Something else that you can easily control is your attitude. So you want to be nice, but you don't want to be over nice. And even if they're not nice, you still want to be nice to them. Because you never know when somebody else might be watching you and see how you react. You can ask for deals, but don't force it either. Don't be super aggressive with asking for the best bottom dollar deal. You also want to make eye contact with them. So don't be shifty. Don't be hiding your eyes and, oh, I don't know, make eye contact with them. So that way they know you're being serious and you're being honest in the front with them. It's your approach. So if you go up to a table and it's an older gentleman or older woman, use the sir or madam. If it's a younger person, you know, be more laid back with them. Uh, match their body language. So if they're crossing their arms, cross your arms. If they're standing with their hands on their hips, stand with your hands on their hips. Don't do the teapot though. People don't like you when you do the teapot. If you pick something up, don't take it out of their line of sight. People get very edgy when you move something out of their line of sight. It's their stuff still until you pay for it. So the more at ease they are, the more likely they are to give you a good deal. Also, if they have children around, you want to address them too. Don't make it weird. Just say hello. Something else is if you hear them using a, a different language and you can speak that language, speak that language to them. It gives you a more common ground with that person. It might give you an advantage as well. Say hi to them. Don't just go in for the kill and ask them if they'll take $7 for something. Be nice to them. Say hello. Have some small talk with them. That goes a long way towards getting what you need. Ask if their prices are negotiable. And bear in mind where you are too, because if you're at a store, they're probably not gonna be as negotiable as if you're at a garage sale or a flea market or an expo. And take into account the time of day. If it's early in the day, they're probably not gonna negotiate. If it's edging towards the end of the day, they're probably gonna be more likely to cut you a deal on something. If the prices are not negotiable, ask them if they'll do buy three get one free or buy four get one free this way it shows them that you're willing to spend a little bit of money with that person it might help to grease the wheels also you want to be mindful if the games are not individually priced you want to be more generic with how much are the games and you don't want to hold up the most expensive one in the bunch either again if the prices are negotiable and you've talked to the person for the past 10 minutes and you're gaining a good rapport with them buy something from them because even if it might not be something you need today if you go back next week they may remember you and they may have something different another couple general techniques is go early don't wait until four o'clock when the flea market closes at five and expect to find great things you'll get better deals but you might not find what you're looking for if you're going to a flea market you want to look for the people that have a lot of different things on their table. So you don't want to go to somebody that is only selling video games. You want to look for the people that have a lot of tools and maybe some houseware stuff and a few games. They're not really all that interested in getting the highest dollar for those games. They're just there to make a quick buck. So those people are going to be more likely to negotiate with you. Weather can play an important role in this too. So. If you're hot and the person's sitting in the sun, play to that situation. Offer to buy them a soda if they can't leave. That might be another 
in to get you a better deal. Bear in mind, towards the end of the day, people are gonna be more apt to cut you better deals because they don't wanna take it home. They just wanna make some money and get it out of their van or truck or whatever. Something else to do, use sensible groupings. So, for example, if they're 50 cents each, ask if it's they would do three for a buck. If it's five dollars each, ask three for ten. If it's ten dollars each, ask three for twenty. You never know. Don't get over invested. So if you truly don't want to pay more than what you're offering and they're not coming down, put the item down and walk away. Sometimes if it's a decent chunk of change, they might call you back to the table. You never know. One of the things you can do, check for damage. So if the case is broken, or if there's no manual, or if it's in one of those horrible GameStop cases, you might be able to get them down for that. And also, if you're buying disc games and you don't have a disc resurfacer, make sure they're not scratched, because nothing's worse than buying a game for $3 and getting it home and finding out that it doesn't play. If you're looking for anything that has batteries or had batteries in it at one point in time, check for corrosion because a lot of times you can clean that up but to the seller they might see that and just automatically take a little bit off something else you want to do stress certain words so old and dirty and sudden faded um, that might help them to devalue the item while you know it might be a ten dollar game you might be able to get it for five if the seller's coming in really high and you see that there's damage to the game show that to them let them know that hey you're assuming all the risk on this and that it might not play when you get it home they get to walk away with the five or ten bucks but now you're stuck with a game for systems you are assuming all risk unless that person that's selling it can test it right there so that might be another way that you can get them down on price because again you're assuming all risk another tactic when you ask them a question that you want them to answer yes end it with yes like you're leading them to that answer and also not a little bit that way they give an affirmative because once that starts rolling in their head they'll probably say yes tell them you're buying for somebody else tell them you're buying for your niece or your nephew or your younger sibling and that they give you five dollars or ten dollars to buy something for them people are much more likely to give you a deal when they know there's a child involved Another idea is if you have multiple people with you at the flea market and you see something that you want to buy, have multiple people go by and offer them a low amount for the item. And then you go and offer them what you want to pay for the item. And they'll be much more likely to give you that deal. This section I want to call combo breakers. And what I mean by that is somebody might start saying something that you don't have a reply for. For example, it goes for this on eBay. Well, one, you're not on eBay. Two, the one on eBay was probably complete and in box and with the manual, and this one isn't. Three, the person on eBay had to set up the profile, take the pictures, had to go through a lot of hassle just to put that item on eBay. Is this person really going to want to do that? Or will they take five bucks less just to get it off their table? Some closing ideas for you. When you're discussing price with a person, pause and leave some silence in there. It makes it a little bit uncomfortable, but it might help them to understand that you're willing to walk away. Also, if you're wearing sunglasses, take your sunglasses off, especially towards the end. This way you can look them in the eye and they can get a sense of who you are without the shades on doing fuzzy math. What I mean by that is if you have a few items, maybe two of them are 15, one's 10, and one's 25, offer the person 50 bucks and have it in, their, in your hand ready to hand it to them. Don't shove it in their face, but have it right about where their hand is so that they can easily grab it and then you're done. Another tactic you can do is called this is my last and what that means is you want to set this up so that if you have jeans on or if you have pants or something that has multiple pockets maybe a shirt pocket um, a couple pockets in your pants you want to set this up so that 
In your front left pocket, you might have three singles. In your front right pocket, you might have a five. In your back pocket, you have a 10. In your breast pocket, you might have a 20. And what you can do with this then is when the person is asking for $25 for something, you break out and say, this is my last $20. Would you take $20? That way they know or think that it's your last 20 bucks and they will cut you a deal. Or if it's a $5 item, you pull out the three singles and say, this is my last $3. The catch with this is you gotta make sure that you have items with you. Nobody's gonna buy it if you're not carrying a bag or bags full of stuff with you. So food for thought. Another tactic you can do is to meet me in the middle. So if they're asking 40 and you want 20, meet them in the middle at 30. It's pretty simple. And this should go without saying, when you're negotiating and you hand the person $50 and you were supposed to get charged 35, make sure you're getting $15 back. Because if you've negotiated them down, you want to make sure you're getting the right change back. Lastly, you want to say thank you. If the person knocked a decent percentage off of their price, be thankful that they gave you a good deal on stuff. Because next time you go, they might remember you. They might remember that you said thank you. And they might be more willing to work with you again. At this point, I'd like to thank you for watching. Did I miss something or do you have a tip that you want to add to this list go ahead and add a comment below if you like this content hit the like button and for regular updates on video releases you can subscribe to receive those notifications other than that have a good one